Hey, I'm Kyle, and this is the Vervet Forest, season two, episode number 25. This is the final episode of the season, and on today's episode, Red, Belle, Gabe, and Django all get to head with their foster moms into their foster troops. And that's it. It's the best way to end a season, right? All the babies getting fostered and heading out into their new families. I'd like to give a shout out to all of my patrons, because you guys are the best, but to my top patrons, Mac, Marcia, Merlot, Shannon Martinez, Janet Franciscovich, Stephanie from Australia, Chuck and Di, and Jim and Linda. Thank you all very much. If you'd like to become a patron, you can head on over to uh, my Patreon site. That link is in the description below the video, as well as a ton of other links, like how to donate directly to the Vervet Monkey Foundation. Uh, even though this is the last episode of baby season, it is not the last episode. There are still going to be tons of episodes of other things coming out. So remember to subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications. All right, let's get into the episode. It took Gabe about three days before he finally settled in and accepted his new foster family. He chose Juno as his foster mom, probably because of their mutual love for grass, and they're as happy as can be. Django and Red also settled in with Missy of Sickbay Troop.
The three of them had bonded really well, but the boys were still pretty independent. Missy was a great foster mom. She was giving the two boys exactly the amount of attention that they desired. About a week later, it was time for Gabe to join the troop with his foster mom, Juno. Gabe and Juno both made very little effort to exit the enclosure, and Briani and a couple of juveniles took the chance to come in and kick it. <laughs> something. After about an hour of waiting, Gabe and Juno finally made their way into the troop. Everything was great from the get-go. James' troop is generally a very mellow troop, and so Gabe was just welcomed with love and interest. It wasn't long before Gabe was up in the trees running around for the first time in a very long time. Juno kept a watchful eye on her curious kid.
I think this is my favorite type of adoption, just because the two are so madly in love with each other. Gabe trusts Juno with his life, and Juno is the ultimate protector of Gabe, never letting him out of her sight and always scooping him up for hugs. Joe, Josie, Tori, and Megan were all around for Belle's integration into the blind enclosure. How do I do it? Just wrap her up in a blanket and put the whole blob on the floor. I, I've, I've done my bite for the month. Yeah, I dropped the blanket. The whole thing. We've done it before as well. It's just opening the cage and letting it go. You know, so just open the cage and walk out. You can also do that. She put all that on. I probably don't need a blanket as well, to be fair. Because she freaks out with a blanket. But that's fine, whatever. So then maybe just put the whole cage in, um, get it ready like that, and then put the whole cage in and just open the door and then walk out. Okay. Because then um, you're just giving shots to the Belle was quick to explore her new environment. Shasta kept a close eye on Belle and took her time before making a move. Once Belle was up on a perch in the corner, Shasta took her opportunity and gave Belle a good sniff. <laughs> Cuddy sat by just being Cuddy. Just lifted up her hands like, oh, sorry, didn't mean to touch you too much. Yeah. Sybil was perched majestically in her enclosure next door. Then Belle approached Shasta, but Belle was still a little nervous about grabbing onto Shasta, so Shasta did her best to comfort Belle. there's a pole between you. Stitcher. 
you see that move? Shasta walked away and Belle got a little nervous, so Belle climbed up onto the ceiling. Tori and Joe grabbed Belle's milk bell, which is a little bell that gets rung to tell Belle to come to drink her milk, hoping that by ringing the bell it would get her to leave the ceiling and climb down to the fence where they could feed her from the bottle. Fortunately, it worked out. Belle and Shasta finally settled in together, for the most part. But Belle still had her reservations and refused to hug Shasta. She just so desperately wants her to turn around and hug her and groom her. A few days later, the final two orphans of the season, Red and Django, got to join sickbay troop with their foster mom, Missy. They're all down here now, Ellie. Everyone was very excited, and the boys got plenty of love from all of the monkeys. Chicken, chicken, and chicken tries to take red. Red and Django spent the rest of the day up in the trees playing with Abby and the other juveniles. Okay, can you see the shaped arm? Mm. Yes, that's Django. Um, and red's there in the crop again. Yeah. I thought red was going to be the <laughs> When we first met, it was about um, red was quite nervous and a lot of the time by himself. Um, the females would approach him, he was a bit anxious and um, I did leave. Um, when I left, Ronnie was grooming him this morning. Yeah, last two of the season. I'm so proud of Ellie. Come on. Um, let's see. I'll just show you the thing. It can turn around. Not the one that I've done to me. Mm-hmm. Red. He's so cute, Red. I know Abby gets in there sometimes with his ears. Red. Um, Django and Red, no. Django and Abby are playing it earlier as well. That's Oh, yeah, 
Jango's at the back. So Missy has got her back to us, and Jango is holding on to her stomach, and then Red is holding on to Jango's back. Watch Red try to climb this tree while hanging on to his massive piece of sweet potato. That was a long time coming. That thing's like as big as his head. Mm -hmm. 